my question, uh, let me begin with you, Mr. Altman, is uh, should we consider independent testing labs to provide scorecards and nutrition labels or the equivalent of nutrition labels, packaging that indicates to people whether or not the content can be trusted, what the ingredients are, and what the garbage going in may be because it could result in garbage going out. Yeah, I, I think that's a great idea. I think that companies should put their own sort of, you know, here are the results of our test of our model before we release it. Here's, here's where it has weaknesses. Here's where it has strengths. Uh, but also independent audits for that are, are very important. These models are getting more accurate over time. Uh, you know, this is, this is, as we have, I think, said as loudly as anyone, this technology is in its early stages. It definitely still makes mistakes. We find that people, that users, are, are pretty sophisticated and understand where the mistakes are that they need, or likely to be, that they need to be responsible um, for verifying what the models say, that they go off and check it. Um, I, I worry that as the models get better and better, uh, the users can have sort of less and less of their own discriminating thought process around it. But, but I think users are more capable than we give, often give them credit for in, in conversations like this. I think a lot of disclosures, which if you've used ChatGPT, you'll see about the inaccuracies of the model, um, are also important. And I'm, I'm excited for a world where companies publish with the models information about how they behave, where the inaccuracies are, and independent agencies or companies provide that as well. I think it's a great idea. Uh, I alluded in my uh, opening remarks to the, the jobs issue, the economic effects on employment. Uh, I think you have said, uh, in fact, and I'm going to quote, development of superhuman machine intelligence is probably the greatest threat to the continued existence of humanity, end quote. Uh, you may have had in mind the effect on, on jobs, which is really my biggest nightmare in the long term. Uh, let me ask you uh, what your biggest nightmare is and whether you share that concern. Like with all technological revolutions, I expect there to be significant impact on jobs, but exactly what that impact looks like is very difficult to predict. If we went back to the, the other side of a previous technological revolution, talking about the jobs that exist on the other side, um, you know, you can go back and read books of this. It's uh, what people said at the time. It's difficult. I believe that there will be far greater jobs on the other side of this, and that the jobs of today will get better. I, I think it's important. First of all, I think it's important to understand and think about GPT-4 as a tool, not a creature, which is easy to get confused, and it's a tool that people have a great deal of control over and how they use it. Uh, and second, GPT-4 and things other systems like it, uh, are good at doing tasks, not jobs. And so you see already people that are using GPT-4 to do their job much more efficiently um, by helping them with tasks. Now, GPT-4 will, uh, I think, entirely automate away some jobs, and it will create new ones that we believe will be much better. This happens, again, my, my understanding of the history of technology is one long technological revolution, not a bunch of different ones put together. But this has been continually happening. We, as our quality of life raises and as machines and tools that we create can help us live better lives, uh, the bar raises for what we do and, and our human ability and what we spend our time going after uh, goes after more ambitious, more satisfying projects. So there, there will be an impact on jobs. Uh, we try to be very clear about that and I think it will require partnership between the industry and government, but mostly action by government to figure out how we want to mitigate that. Um, but I'm very optimistic about how great the jobs of the future will be. And last, I don't know if I'm allowed to do this, but I will note that Sam's worst fear I do not think is employment, and he never told us um, what his worst fear actually is, and I think it's germane to find out. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Altman if he cares to respond. Yeah. Look, we, we have tried to be very clear about the magnitude of the risks here. Um, I... I think jobs and employment and what we're all going to do with our time really matters. I agree that when we get to very powerful systems, the landscape will change. I think I'm just more optimistic that 
we are incredibly creative and we find new things to do with better tools and that will keep happening. Um, my worst fears are that we cause significant, we, the field, the technology, the industry, cause significant harm to the world. Uh, I think that could happen in a lot of different ways. It's why we started the company. Um, it's a big part of why I'm here today uh, and why we've been here in the past and, and we've been able to spend some time with you. I think if this technology goes wrong, it can go quite wrong. Uh, and we want to be vocal about that. We want to work with the government to prevent that from happening. But we, we try to be very clear eyed about what the downside case is and the work that we have to do to mitigate that. Should we be concerned about models that can, large language models, that can predict survey opinion and then can help organizations, entities fine tune strategies to elicit behaviors from voters? Should we be worried about this for our elections? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Senator Hawley, for the question. It's, it's one of my areas of greatest concern. The, 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 the more general ability of these models to manipulate, to persuade, uh, to provide sort of one-on-one -on -one, uh, you know, interactive disinformation. I think that's like a broader version of what you're talking about, but given that we're going to face an election next year and these models are getting better, uh, I think this is a significant area of concern. I think there's a lot of there's a lot of policies that companies can voluntarily adopt, and I'm happy to talk about what we do there. Um, I do think some regulation would be quite wise on this topic. Uh, someone mentioned earlier, it's something we really agree with. People need to know if they're talking to an AI, if, if content that they're looking at might be generated or might not. I think it's a, a great thing to do, is to make that clear. Um, I think we also will need rules, guidelines uh, about what What's expected in terms of disclosure uh, from a company providing a model uh, that could have th these sorts of uh, abilities that you talk about? So I'm nervous about it. I think people are able to adapt quite quickly. Uh, when Photoshop came onto the scene a long time ago, you know, for a while people were really quite fooled by Photoshopped images and then pretty quickly developed uh, an understanding that images might be Photoshopped. Uh, this will be like that, but on steroids. And the the interactivity, um, the ability to really model, predict humans well, as you talked about, uh, I think is going to require a combination of companies doing the right thing, regulation, and public education. 